Yeah, thank you. And uh, for the warm words and uh, welcome to everybody here in this uh, nice setting. I just will share my window. Um, yes, so um, as um, uh, Carsten already said, we work together in the idea project. And my part was about the multi-dimensional analysis. And there we started to implement some stack question using 3D visualization and a student's input. And as you know, since version 1.4.4, I think um, more than one year ago, the first 3D features were added to a JSX graph and I played around with it. Um, and now I will demonstrate some of uh, the results I could reach. I'm a teacher in engineering math. And so I'm very keen having tools uh, to visualize, to visualize even 3D stuff and one point uh, is a huge field of vector fields. And you see here one point we have in uh, in the third term, in the third semester of the engineers, the description of surfaces given over a region in the R2. And uh, then we are discussing uh, the flux uh, over a surface. You see here the scalar product with a vector field, uh, capital V, and here's a description of the surface. And here we have a lot of interesting things inside. So the final picture um, I had in mind uh, to have something like that, uh, a surface and a vector field. And I will now um, show you some examples I have implemented the last months. The first thing is you see here um, a typical 3D view inside an JSX graph applet. Uh, you have here the axis and um, as I started to work with it, we do not have um, I hope that my mouse is visible is visible as well, uh, as well. So okay, yes, uh, that's fine. And the first question was to add here some annotations for the axis, and this is one solution we had. I'm not sure as if everybody has seen already the call uh, how to create a three D view. And um, this is a bit, uh, this is an additional line. We have created a board and then we can add inside a board an object called View3D. And this is here related to the coordinates inside the surrounding board. And then we can add here the axis or the, the limits of each um, axis, uh, the x-axis or y and z-axis. And um, usually I followed the, the idea of Alfred to have a variable and to add this. And then you see here some sophisticated rules to add depending on the box as a visualization, as the labels to each of these axes. This is one thing I have used always. And here in this picture, you can see already a result. Um, but let us uh, look um, into the scalar product, what we see here. The first thing is we have here um, a partial derivatives, but there's nothing else. And the tangent vector times another tangent vector. So we have here the cross product um, and this is a scalar multiplied with the vector field. And so we have the component orthogonal to the surface. So at the end, it is nothing else as a triple product from uh, we, uh, well known from geometry. And then I started um, or I promised to um, Alfred, uh, at, at the last conference, I will implement this 
here inside um as it's uh, using the new features so and as you already i will switch back as uh, if you look here at this picture it's very difficult to um see what happens here in detail and so i decided to add some features to build this figure step by step um in the 3D part, we even can add points, we can drag around. And usually, you see, uh, this is only inside a plane, the XY plane. But if I press the shift button, the shift key, I uh, can move it um, as well in the in that direction. And you see that as a plane I have added for the two vectors here um, is updated uh, immediately. If we have this, uh, then we can uh, turn around the, the view and we can look on the plane from different directions. And now we can start with uh, some constructions. The first point is to add the normal vector to uh, the plane. And uh, sometimes uh, it looks like that is not orthogonal, but if you choose the right direction, you will see, okay, it is. And then I decided to add a toggle button for the C and B point to show the students that the normal will change the sign. From these bows, uh, um, uh, the next step is to add a third point, point D. Even this point is draggable. And um, with these points, I can then uh, add the volume. And for the volume, I have chosen different opacity uh, sliders, opacity sliders. The first one is the plane um, given by the points B and C. This can be controlled with the first slider, as you see. And then the other both planes you can control with the second one. And the remaining three uh, pla uh, planes um, are in a different color. And now by dragging around, one can get and imagine, uh, or can imagine uh, how this looks like. And the interesting part in the triple product is now that we have the point D and we have the normal uh, of the at the plane. And now we need the projection to this vector and that now we can add here. And then one can see the height of uh, this object. And this is added here with additional lines. And uh, so um, I hope that the idea of the uh, of this volume and how it is computed and what happens is uh, a bit better uh, to understand for the students. Why this triple product is quite important for us. Um, if you go back to the integral stuff, then we will see here that inside this computation, we have uh, as well the um, area of the small element descript described by S partial U and S partial V has to be computed. And this uh, is um, already inside the absolute value or the length of this normal vector. So this is the first point um, I, I have created, um, but there are, also, also here, I just have added here and I will publish it afterwards, um, what I have done to create a plane uh, in the 3D uh, space, we need a point where it is attached to and directions. So, and uh, these directions from A to B and A to C 
I have computed using a small function I've written and then to color it in the proper lens, I need the lens of the vectors I have obtained. And then you see here, uh, the plane will be uh, colored from value zero to the lens of the vector. Otherwise you can even sh move it around so that you can center a plane, for instance, to uh, see the tension plane uh, at a graph. Um, the normal vector um, is direct available. I just have to uh, use the member variable normal. And so this was not very hard to implement this vector. Another interesting or a central point in um, the engineering math is everything concerning vector fields and ODEs. Uh, and here in the last version, and two new um, options were added. The, um, you can create a slope field and you can create a vector field. This is in the 2D uh, case. The slope field, this is um, very good applicable to a a 1D ODE, you have an equation of type y prime of x is f of x and y. So um, often x is used as a time. And then you can, he, can draw in each point uh, the slope. And uh, you can afterwards add here such a solution curve. This looks... Uh, um here um this looks like this you can i have added in all my applets an input box inside the applet using the the input field provided by jsx graph to type in a function i have chosen here cosine of x so this is the, the picture we just have seen and then you can drag around here uh, an initial point and you can see the tra trajectory. To have some options in visualization, I have added a slider again for the opacity to see um, or to, to generate your own pictures. But you, uh, what I like to do is even to switch on or off uh, some parts inside a, di a diagram and um, this is um, what you can do here. Maybe, and the lens of the arrows uh, has to be adjustable because this depends always a bit on the vector field you have provided. And uh, the lens of the trajectory can be um, is set as its resolution can be set by this slider. If you like to change it, as I just have shown, you can just type in here a new function and uh, you can apply this function to this applet. And here you can observe some other interesting things like stability. So if you drag around here in the, uh, around the y-axis, you will see a stationary solution. Uh, but if you go uh, outside, you see that it becomes very unstable. And this is a point where hopefully the students can um, see what stability means. Um, the, the vector, uh, this is done quite Intuitively, you, you will create a slope field. You will need a function. Then you will define here a grid of oh, and the oh, number of uh, points in the grid and some additional stuff for nice arrows. This is a, the suggestion of Alfred I simply re have reused. If you go ahead, you will have a vector field in 2D. 
Um, I will just close some windows so that I will have at the end the right one. And now the time takes a bit longer than uh, expected. Here you see uh, now two input fields where you can add the components of the vector field. If I like to have the same as in the example uh, before, I just have to change here the entries. I can choose, okay, I will use a one in uh, X direction and cosine Y in um, Y direction. And then you will see the same vector field. But you see one difference here only in one direction, the trajectory is shown. If I uh, reset this, you will see here some clo a closed circle because you have here some uh, uh, yeah some stable solutions, and you can drag around again the point, and then this is uh, integrated according to the vector field, and so we have here two new uh, sliders. One is a number of steps used in the integration and we have here a step lens so you will see if the step lens becomes larger and larger sometimes the trajectory will be become a bit awful but um the interesting thing is if you use a quite a good method you will see that the solution is very stable and you see that it will change uh, if you drag it around to the other state. Um, and on the vector fields, on the arrows, you will see in which direction the curve would uh, go around. The only difference from a slope field to vector field is now that you have to provide two functions one for the x direction, one for the y direction. And here you see um, for, I think the most of you uh, use this already that I completely, uh, I consequently use the uh, yeah, Jesse code uh, snippet functionality to get uh, the function expressions. Now we come to 3D because um, this is only one dimension more. And you see here a new component. Now we have three. You can set the vector field. Um, the only thing which I could not realize yet is to update the uh, trajectory directly. So if I like to see the trajectory, I have to uh, push the button here, set the trajectory, and then now you see um, how it goes uh, along. And now we can uh, again look from different sides on it. And now we have here the view from top. And so it looks like in the picture before because the components are the same and the rest of the uh, applet is a combination of things I already uh, mentioned. So we can adjust uh, the lens. Uh, we can adjust the number of steps we like to compute. And I can switch off the vector field. Uh, this uh, takes a bit time. Um, I think my implementation is not the best one yet. Um, uh, no. And I can uh, as well uh, switch on and off um okay now maybe i have to reload so um okay let's let's go on um what i have used uh, to compute the trajectory 
the interest or the, the, the nice uh, thing inside JSX graph is that we are that also a lot of numerical methods are available. And as well, um, from numerical methods, uh, Runge-Kutter methods are um, already uh, implemented. And for the for this stuff, I have used the Runge-Kutter 4 um, system, and this is very stable. And then one has to add, here you can add your own butcher arrays, but uh, I have chosen the predefined one an initial value, an interval, the number of steps, and a function. And this is implemented as well for uh, systems of ODEs. And this is what I have used uh, to uh, integrate um, the, uh, according to the vector field. And this looks uh, quite straightforward. And in the 2D case, I have used the update data array function to update the trajectory if I drag around um, the point. This is a bit more numerical stuff now, but it is, um, I, um, I like to show it again because I like it. Um, for a system of ODEs, I have to provide a vector of functions. And this is what you see here. I just add all the input strings from the input uh, fields fx and fy to one string. And now I have a system um, of two uh, functions, but I have to change now to a vector for the state variable. So I will um, use the replace command to substitute x by x0 and y by um, x1. And then I, have, I need two variables, one in time, this is a curve parameter and one for the state variable. And then I can call the Runge-Kutter method as mentioned above. Now let's come back to the problem I have stated uh, in the beginning. Because I have uh, now surfaces and I have vector fields. So I will um, reload my um, applet from Jay's Fiddle. And my idea was um, to have a tool where I can manipulate everything. You see, uh, this is a one, one out of the box um, example. You can uh, enter the vector field or components, um, and you can enter the description of the surface. Um, this is um, done in the interval minus one, one times minus one, one. And here I have chosen um, a torus. And if you like, you can change the torus directly inside here of this. Um, example and can click on update plot. And here uh, I have again added a slider to set the intensity of the vector field as well as the surface and uh, to get an impression what happens. You can switch off the vector field or you can switch off uh, the surface and you can switch on again and so you can get an impression of the question what you see now is this is not the end of this example usually one would like to add maybe the normals at each point or the the result of the cross product or the result of the a scalar product everything can be done now and these are the, the first steps in, in this work. Um, this is a, was one of the most complicated things then to grade down this to, for a vector field at a curve. This was not really uh, complicated. Um, but in between, I had the question, what, what I can do with uh, interactive uh, stuff inside the applet with sliders 
concerning a curve and the vector field. And what you see, what you will see here now is something like a proof of concept um, I have done. You see here a curve. Um, this is uh, defined with using cosine and sine with two parameters. And I can change the parameters and the curve will change immediately. And the vector field is in, in the right part. You see here, I can adjust the lens of the errors. And inside the vector field, I have added an, a, a, a parameter. This is something like an rotation angle of the vector field. And this can be done immediately. So here you see, um, it's it, we have the same power inside these applets as we know from the, I will say classical 2D stuff. Um, just one remark or two remarks at the end. Um, I have used inside my applets always uh, the Jesse code um, and snippet functionality. And so this, everything can, re can replace well inside stack questions by the uh, expre by the expression of curly brackets and the hashtags and the very variable name. So um, my hope is that it's, it simplifies uh, the uh, the stuff to transfer it even into stack in the stack framework. And um, then I have used one function uh, to toggle. Um, objects. This is what is. This is behind my toggle buttons. Is just a list of the the objects I like where I like to switch everything. And this is a, my most used function inside all of this stuff. So and at the end, I will say great thanks, especially to Alfred for all the discussions we had and all the. Uh, major and minor improvements uh, inside the last uh, months uh, we had, and and was not always the three D stuff. Isn't uh, is in, uh, behind some numerical stuff, and all this was is um, uh, I, Carsten already mentioned, uh, supported by the Erasmus Plus project. And the example you have seen here will be available in uh, in this IDM web page at GitHub, and uh, maybe I will add uh, some of the things inside the Moodle course, especially the the page I have shown here will be published there. And so um, I'm finished. Thank you.